Hey, what's up, guys? We're back it again with a new meta hog rider deck coming in quick at a 2.4 elixir cycle. This is one of the most fun decks in the entire game to crush control decks. I mean, it makes sense. Two hog riders is always better than one, and it sure is a lot more fun. When you go for your first hog rider and they defend with the building, you can switch it up and swerve them in the other side. Their eyes will be open wide, and there's nowhere that they can hide from the level 16 hog rider. Most control decks will rely heavily on inferno towers, teslas, or buildings like cannon. So when they have have to deal with a level 16 overleveled hog rider on their tower with no way of pulling it, they can't pull off any defense. And the synergy with this deck works so well together because if they have to drop units, you go for a firecracker, you guarantee chip damage. Every single time that that thing splashes onto your opponent's tower, they're gonna cry. And if they frantically spam in the other side to catch up in damage, you're gonna have such an easy reply. Kiting your opponent's units to the other side with ice golems, distracting any bridge spam with skeletons, devouring any ground units with bats, or simply mirroring up firecrackers to watch your opponents burst up in flames and rage like 4th of July fireworks. This is my new favorite hog rider deck to mess around with on ladder, so let's go jump straight some games, mess people up, and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Creative Code Sir Tag to support the channel. Hey, so jumping into this one, fortunately we have our mini pack in our starting hand when this guy goes in for a hog rider, so that should get shut down with no hits on our tower. If you are a fast fingered boy, you will always connivingly crush those hog riders without any damage on your tower. I can go in for a firecracker here, and it looks like we have a similar deck. You have a similar strategy as me, sir. But I believe that my hog rider is going to be able to punish you and you're not going to be able to finish that off. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. If he doesn't activate King Tower with this firecracker and then I go in for another hog rider because we're able to kill the Inferno Tower with this firecracker, we're able to get damage with the splash damage onto the tower. Infinity and, beyond. and we get an extra hog rider hit. I think we unlocked a new strategy in Clash Royale. If you don't know, now you know. The mirrored hog rider, when your opponent is relying on a building to finish off the first hog rider, they're gonna have absolutely nothing for the second one. Also, that was a great log finishing off the Electro Spirit, so I am vibing with it. Okay, I might be able to firecracker and finish off his firecracker here. I don't know if this is smart. I don't think it was smart. I don't think it was smart. I repent for my sins. I repent for my sins. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that was so close. You're playing with my feelings, Clash Rail. That's unfortunate. You know what? I'm, I'm going to Hog Rider here. Simply because we can activate King Tower with that. And then get an Inferno Tower out of him. Because he doesn't have anything else. I could have dropped an Ice Golem, but this is way better. Wow, look at that positive Elixir trade. Are you kidding me right now? We activated King Tower. Baited out a Firecracker, which was three Elixir. And then another five Elixir from the Inferno Tower, which he then needs to counter my Hog Rider that's about to come at him. This deck is amazing. I don't know why I haven't done this before. I'm loving it. Okay, so the Hog Rider is guaranteed to at least get one hit on the tower, no matter what. Maybe two. Oh, level 16 Hog Rider. My sweet buddy. All right, I'm going to Ice Golem and kite that to the other side so that my Mini Packer can lock onto what we need. I'm also going to log that back. Oh, no, 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 no. Why did you hit the skeletons, you big idiot? No. Mini Pekka, it's not a pancake, bro. Why did you get enticed by that? What's up with that, man? All right, so looking like I might want to mirror the log to kill the firecracker. I don't know if this kills a firecracker. I think it does. Finally, a worthy opponent. Yeah, it does. Wow, the mirror's absolutely straight up broken. I don't know what else to say besides it just seems unfair. So I'm going to go in for a firecracker, a hog rider, and then skeletons here, and then try to get bats down on top of the inferno tower if possible. I wonder if this was the right play. I, 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 I hope it is. I really want it to be, you know? I really want the firecracker to get damage on the tower. And look at that. It worked out. That's amazing. Because I can get another mini packet down to finish off his uh, Valkyrie. He's going to go for a firecracker, so I can probably mirror it. Or uh, mirror log on it. Hoping that that could be the play. Whew. All right. Yeah, you know what? I think it's better for us to go in for another hog rider because his Inferno Tower is out of cycle. We can keep up the aggression because he has the Valkyrie here. If you don't Valkyrie on top of the... Stuff, you're gonna just lose the game. You're, you have to defend the hog rider, but if you defend the hog rider, you also lose. So, I mean, <laughs> who would have thought defending a unit would actually cause you to lose the game? No matter which way this man was looking, he was gonna catch an L. And that's why the synergy of hog rider plus firecracker is absolutely insanely solid. Hey, we got another one here against Lange. What's up, dude? So, first things first, you guys already know hog rider is built to deliver the dominance. My favorite card to cycle to start because if your opponent doesn't have the right counter to it, like, you know, we don't right now against this hog rider that's coming at us, we're going to take a lot of damage. We also bait out a fireball from our opponent, which is not necessarily a good card for him to cycle at the start, so also extremely good for me. I think that the firecracker here could give us a hit on the tower, or it could also activate king tower depending on how bad this is. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yes. Waste that fire spirit. Go to sleep. Close your big blood. If we're playing Hog Rider versus Hog Rider and he's going to have Fireball, it's imperative that we cycle our mini pack on top of his Hog Rider to deny all damage. 
but this guy's gonna have cannons, so it's gonna be a big pain in the booty. All right, at least the hog doesn't get a hit. We can at least vibe with that, right? There's something here for us. If I ice golem with the mini P.E.K.K.A. and, you know, tank for the mini P.E.K.K.A., that would be really good. But if it goes ahead, then I feel like my mini P.E.K.K.A. is just gonna be dead. I can get bats down here to force out some extra elixir. Maybe he's gonna go for an ice spirit. I hope that he doesn't. Oh, wait, the ice gold win condition. Ah, if I go for bats, it's probably gonna give us value. Nope, that wasn't a good play. That was not a good play. Now I'm completely overspending against a hog rider. But the bats don't die to ice golem. Wow. I'm unlocking new potential of cards just by mirroring them up. It's so small brain that it's big brain. It was such a bad bats that it worked out in the end. All right, definitely get a hog rider here because it's going to be able to counter the musketeer. If you guys haven't done this before, it's really fun to go in for hog riders and then force out some extra elixir from your opponent because first off, the musketeer isn't going to get a shot on my tower. And then second off, you had to drop a log and a fire spirit. So he had to drop a lot of extra elixir there. So it was a plus three trade overall for us. Despite us being down on a lot of damage, we can find our way back in this game if I play just well enough. I'm going to savor the flavor of the mini packet, the ice golem win condition again. Oh, come on, ice golem. I, I believed in you a little bit too much there, I think. Maybe we hog rider on the other side and force out elixir and then hog rider again on the left. Do we just go for the dual hog rider to dominance? I think that's the only way I can play the game. Oh, the hog rider slipped his way through. Let's freaking go. Forcing out a fireball as well is phenomenal. He's not going to activate King Tower. That firecracker is just going to lock and load. All right. So we got to go for mini packer first if he decides to go in for a hog rider. Otherwise, we can get skeletons out and fully counter the musketeer. I'm going to ice golem and then I'm going to hog rider counter with the mini packer as soon as he goes in. He's not doing it. Ooh, okay. He's got the moves. That was a really smart play to go in for that. Credit where credit is due. Well played, sir. I think we got to go for dual lane aggression every single time. Like, this is the most scuffed play ever. But I think it's actually going to work out. Look at the hog rider hammering the tower, delivering us the damage. That's what I needed. There's no doubt in my mind. If I didn't have that, I probably would have lost the game already. So we're going to hog rider again because I don't think he's back to cannon. If that level 16 hog rider allows us to win the game, I don't know what to say because I, I feel like I don't deserve it. I feel like I didn't deserve that win, but I'm going to take it. This is amazing. This completely counters every other hog rider cycle player or any cycle player that is relying on a building. There is no way that they can build a proper defense to you. Because if we have two hog riders and they only have one cannon or inferno tower, the math doesn't check out. They'll never be able to cover all of their towers. On to the next one. This guy is apparently a hero, but I honestly believe that Mirror is the true hero of Clash Royale right now. So unless this guy is secretly a mirror in the back behind himself, he's just in a room of mirrors, I feel like he's not the real hero. So we got to uncover the mask and make sure that this man realizes what he really is. Okay, he's going to be running graveyard. There's no doubt in my mind. I think that as soon as I see a tombstone and a baby dragon, there is not much other potential for different decks. So in this specific scenario, I think it's imperative that I keep that firecracker alive. Even though we're going to go into a tombstone, I can log that so then the mini packer goes directly towards the tower. Wait, is that going to give me a hit? Oh my gosh. Firecracker's still alive. The firecracker is still alive. I can go in for a thrive push of the hog rider, get some extra value, and he is not able to finish this off. This is absurd. This is way too much fun for me right now. If I continue to keep the hog rider and the firecrackers alive, there's not much he can do because that thing has just been alive for an entire minute since the very start of the game. Oh my gosh. Maybe he's got a golem deck now. I got to reconsider my initial suspicion of this guy running graveyard because now we see a night witch and I do not see that with graveyard decks unless it's giant graveyard. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. It's the bill. That's kind of what graveyard and golem players do. They do miss a lot of interactions. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've never done that before. I've definitely messed that up. But I mean, I feel like it happens in an inordinate amount of times when you versus someone that has either a golem deck or a graveyard deck, specifically giant graveyard. They'll just make an abundance of misplays and you'll just be like, thank you for the free win. I'm going to go for an ice comb and try to pull that to the other side. The game is still far from over because he's got the broken skeleton king, the two elixir graveyard. If there was one card I could nerf in the entire game, that would be it. Don't get it twisted. I think that that is the best card in the game and the best card for people that don't know how to play the game too. Like you can actually just spam it at the river and nine times out of 10, you're going to get value from that ability. I think that Archer Queen, it's easier to deal with. You can counter it with a fireball for a plus two trade if they go in for like their ability. And you know, Golden Knight, you can kind of body block, but the Skeleton King, if you don't have the right card cycle, you just automatically lose every time. At least I do. Maybe you guys are way better than me, but let me know down below in the comment section, what is the most difficult champion for you to play against personally? Also, I'm going to have an amazing time here. I can just stack up as many firecrackers as I possibly could. 
and we'll see how well it works. If I can Ice Golem here, we should be able to body block, and I don't think he's able to finish off the Mini Packet. As long as the Mini Packet stays alive, then we're okay. Doesn't look like it's staying alive any longer, so I've got to go in for a Firecracker and then another Mini Pekka. Definitely want the Firecracker to finish off all the bats if possible. And he's going to tornado everything closer together. That was the interesting play, because now you don't have anything for the Hog Rider. You have literally nothing for the Hog Rider. So I can log on your Tombstone, get a million damage, and then vibe ahead. But look at that. The, the two Elixir Graveyard still doing damage to my tower. <laughs> it's just unlikely, you know? It's unlikely for any other card to get that abundance of value. I don't think the mini pack is going to be able to take the tower. He should be able to log it back in with the King Tower activated. Oh my gosh, wait, what? Mini Packa surprising me every single time. Finishing off the tower so we don't have to waste any more time with this dude. And I guess the mini Packa was the hero against the hero. All right, so jump into the action against Mr. Greatsword. So I have no clue what this guy's going to have, but if he's a great sword, he's probably going to start spamming stuff at the river as soon as he possibly can. So I'm going to hog right on the other side, and look at us go. We just completely picked the right position away from the cannon cart and right into the tower that has no support. So I'm going to go Ice Golem here. I think I can get away with bats on top of the cannon cart to finish it off and then not spend as much elixir. So that feels... Mother, is that you? Very, very good. Oh my gosh, wait, what? No way. This is not what we wanted to see, guys. I'm not going to lie. Haven't seen Mother Witch in a fat minute. That thing <laughs> just came back to bite me as soon as we run a spawner. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to say, as soon as we run a deck that's weak to spawners, we play against the spawners. We're going to have to go in for skeletons up top so then we can go and pull the Leap Barbarian so it doesn't get as much damage. Oh my goodness. Well played to our opponent. Credit where credit is due. Whipping out the Mother Witch in the most unlikely position ever. So, you are a savage, sir, and I'm here for it. Obviously, if you're going to end up having someone with Elite Barbarians and Mother Witch spamming you at the river every single time that they can, you got to make sure that you cycle a lot of Firecrackers and prey off of their inability to kill them. So, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go in for a Firecracker in the back. I'm not going to go in for Mirror Hog Redders or any shenanigans like that. I might be better off eating the damage from the Electro Wizard and then Firecrackering twice and Ice Goleming. Because he's going to Fireball on the first one, but he can't kill the second one as fast as he wants. Especially if I get Skeletons down and they're going to die to the Cannon Card, so then he can't use the Mother Witch ability to turn them into Piggies. So I think he might Mother Witch here. Oh, he went in for a Bandit instead. Wow, I thought he was going to try to activate King Tower and get a Piggy from that, but I guess we are built different. Fire in the hole! Yes! Oh my gosh! You know, it's kind of like luck there a little bit. You're just hoping and praying that your Firecracker doesn't get hit by the Bandit, because then you would have to spend way more Elixir. Oh, man, that was awesome. So now we can go in for bats, predict him to go in for Mother Witch, so I'm going to go Ice Golem. And he didn't drop Mother Witch. Wow, his reaction speed was not that fast there. That feels bad. Okay, so I think it's better for me to just let that Ice Golem do its thing, be an alternative win condition that it always wanted to be, and then I can go for a Firecracker in the back. It's baffling to me that he didn't use that opportunity and go in for uh, a good Mother Witch at the river to get the bats. I don't know. That was uh, very interesting, to say the least. I'm going to go for Mini Pack and I'm going to go for Hog Rider just to keep up the aggression. I don't necessarily think that I'm going to be able to kill the Cannon Card here. I just want to get damage with my Firecracker. I have simple needs. No, I don't get it. All right, that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to have to stack up a lot of stuff. Maybe I can go in for double logs. I've never done this before, but I guess it's the first time for everything. Oh, wow, that was an interesting fireball. He predicted that the Firecracker was going to get knocked back a lot more than he thought. Okay, I'm going to go in for uh, a, a double Firecrackers at the river. Maybe I can get three of them at the river, guys. Oh my gosh, I've never done this before. Three firecrackers at the river. Stand and deliver. <laughs> no way. I might be able to completely kill the cannon cart on his side of the map and get more damage. This is amazing. No, one more tap, one more tap, one more tap, one more tap. Yes. Beautiful, baby. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. And if you go other side, I've got Ice Comb to go and kite those elite barbarians. So I don't even have to worry, my dude. Those elite barbarians are super sad. If you guys like beating elite barbarians, I think you need to run Ice Golem or Valkyrie in your deck. And if you're not, then you're a wild child. So I'm able to go in for another Hog Rider here. It doesn't seem like he has a good answer because he doesn't have elite barbarians back in cycle. So he doesn't have e to stun. What is he going to do? He's going to Fireball and go for a Cannon Cart. And that's simply not going to be enough. GG, well played and peace out. It was a pleasure tearing your towers to pieces, my dude. Especially when you're running the Leap Barbarians with Heal Spirit. So we got a game here against the CR Nightmare. Is he ready to see his Nightmare develop before his very eyes? Or is he just going to be the Nightmare that we never wanted to see? If this guy's got Tornado and he actually hits it, unlike the last Golem player that we played against, he's going to be a Savage Sir. So we got to test the waters and see what we can make happen with this Firecracker popping off on top of that Golem. Oh, man, if I lose this game, I'm going to lose so many trophies, too. So I'm really scared right now. <laughs> Golem in the back. First play, completely all-inning. And then also probably like a minus 35 trophies if I lose this one. 
Maybe I can go in for an Ice Golem here and Body Block so that it doesn't get as much damage. Or I, I, I don't think I need to. I think that's good enough. I think we're chilling. I'm going to go for Skeletons and cycle to my Hog Rider because I needed to cycle one card to get back to it. And I might be able to go for a double Hog Riders. Oh my gosh. Wait, what? I swear. This is the only type of person that would ever do that. It's a Golem player. <laughs> oh my gosh. It happens way too often for this to be a coincidence. All right, so we're gonna go for bats and I wanna be able to get chip damage with a firecracker on top of that as well. That would be amazing if we could be able to finish off all of the skeletons and then get some nice value. I think he's gonna baby dragon, so I don't wanna spend any extra elixir with an ice golem. I just don't think it would be worth it. I'll ice golem closer to my tower, guarantee that we can finish off the baby dragon now. And, hmm, if I hog right in left hand lane, this is bound to give me some good value. We're gonna force out elixir and then he's not gonna have anything for the next hog right in the right hand side. This hog runner is bound to do a ton of damage. Please don't have enough elixir for the tornado. You're not going to have an elixir for the tornado for a while. That's what I'm talking about. I sensed it. You know, I had that sixth sense. I was like, you know, if you drop 25 elixir and it's single elixir, you're probably not going to be able to afford a counter to the mirrored one. And that's how this deck works. A lot of people on ladder overcommit like it's their job. Like that Skeleton King, what is that supposed to do? How do you get rewarded for that? That's so dumb. He got damaged by dropping that into a firecracker and bats. That is ridiculous, Clash Royale. But now he doesn't have Tornado, so I'm wondering what he's expecting. I think he's expecting to take a lot of damage. Hopefully, right? Because that would be the reasonable, reasonable assumption. All right, I'm going to go for Mirror Firecracker because it doesn't seem like he has a good answer to that. And he will probably Lightning. If he Lightnings, then I can go for a Mini P.E.K.K.A. And then he's not going to be able to kill the Mini P.E.K.K.A. So that's a vibe. All right, that's what I'm going to go for. Mini P.E.K.K.A. I choose you. I can log this back if it gets spicy and dicey. I want to go for double firecrackers and then just log that back so he doesn't get any death damage on my tower. And then the firecracker should be able to melt everything here. The fact that he tried to go for tornado there was very ambitious and it was funny. He's going to click the ability. I can sense it into double firecrackers and an ice golem. Come on, dude. I believed. No, it didn't happen. All right. Well, we can stack up three firecrackers here just for the ultimate meme and serenade this man sweetly and put him to sleep with the firecracker sauce. GG, well played and peace out. I'm glad that I won that game because if I lost that, I probably would have lost all my marbles just like Squid Game. I would have never been the same. Like, subscribe for more daily content and have an awesome rest of your day.